Are you gonna be in my video? <laughs> less and today I am going grocery shopping and tomorrow is school and I need to get some things so that I have easy stuff for my family for breakfast lunch and dinners over lunch today um, the family and I we planned out our dinners for this week so we're having Thai stuff sweet potatoes whoops um, black bean soup with cornbread muffins lasagna and salad lasagna and salad we're having two nights in a row I always like to have a leftovers night, if not two during the week. And then one of my daughters requested on Friday night that we have kebabs in the backyard on our uh, fire pit. And then over the weekend, I'm going to make a big pot of corn soup and blueberry muffins, that's what they requested, and we'll eat that over the weekend. So that is planned. Then what I do after that is I sit down and I write out my grocery list. Now here's the deal. The best thing to do, if you're not doing online grocery shopping, the best thing to do then is to estimate how much each item is going to cost. Always go over, never estimate under what it could cost, and then give yourself a total. So for Aldi today, I think I'm going to spend about $50, and then I haven't done my monthly bulk buying yet. I normally do that with Azure Standard. That comes later in the month. There are some things that I need to pick up from Costco, so that's included in my bulk budget. I'll get to that in a second. So I'm hoping to spend around 108, and then throughout the week, if I need to get some produce items, I live really close to an Albertsons and a Walmart, and so I can just head over there and pick up some last minute produce items if I need to. So that is what I have done there. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this. This is my grocery envelope. I showed you this in last week's haul. I went over a lot of grocery budget talk, so check out that video if you haven't yet. I split up my grocery money by week, but here's the deal. Our grocery budget is 700 a month. 300 of that is used for bulk buying. Then the other 400, I split over the next four weeks and I pick up items that um, we need to, like fresh produce, you know, we don't really buy milk, but if you buy milk, you know, that would be included in your weekly buying. And then um, my bulk foods, here it is, is for Costco and my Azure Standard Order. I do deposit money back in. If I don't do this, then I'm not held accountable. <laughs> so my Azure order it has to be used from my cash that I deposit back in. So that's what we're gonna go do. We're gonna go do our grocery shopping, come with us. I'll show you any great deals I can see in Aldi, and then we're gonna go to Costco. Friends, well, we just left Aldi. Troy wanted to run inside CVS to get a battery real quick. And honestly, I didn't show you too much in Aldi because Aldi was picked over and just kind of a disappointment today. I spent $40 in Aldi. I didn't get everything on my list, but that's okay. Only two things that I wasn't able to get. So we're going to head over to Costco. Hopefully Costco will have everything that we need and then we'll head home and I'll show you what I bought. So we just got back from grocery shopping and the stores were so picked over, Aldi and Costco both. So we did the best that we could do and let me show you what we got. Okay, so here's what we got total. We spent a total of about $190. We spent $150 at Costco and $40 at Aldi. So we bought walnuts. These are about $11 at Costco, we use these to make walnut spread for olive sandwiches. I'll share that sometime soon with you all. We make 
all kinds of sauces out of walnuts. So we love our walnuts. Ginger, I'm gonna chop all this ginger up, put it in the freezer for my ginger tea. The strawberry uh, jellies were $7.99, so I picked up two. Tofu, you get six for $6. I picked up one maple syrup for $11. The olives were 10, this was about three. They had no fresh berries, gone, all of them. So I picked up one bag of frozen blueberries for $10. The almonds were $13. And I have an almond cow to make homemade uh, dairy-free milk, so I picked these up to try. Batteries came out of my household budget, these were $13. The Montreal seasoning, my husband loves this to put on potatoes, it was $5. These were $11 each for a two pack. So I picked up two of those. I was out of canned tomato sauce and diced tomatoes. I will only buy them when organic and I'm pretty picky about that. And these were great prices, about $6 per box. These were from Aldi. They were $2.50, I believe. And these will be a great add-in for the kids' lunches. Lots of bananas, because they were only 29 cents a pound at Aldi. Uh, this cucumber, it was a dollar at Aldi. My daughter got a donut maker for Christmas and the donuts were sticking. So she asked for me to pick up some avocado oil. So I did, this is from Costco and it's just avocado oil. It was $11 for a two pack. The bread at Aldi was $1.50 each, including the bagels, just $1.50 each. This will be for lunches and breakfasts. The chips were $1.50 each. These were free because we bought a bag last week and noticed that the bag had been opened and so they replaced it for us. So that was just an even exchange. Applesauce, we like to put this on toast as, as if it was butter with some cinnamon sugar. Um, and then I also um, eat applesauce every evening to take a vitamin. So <laughs> that's what I do with that. Some cocktail peanuts to make some homemade trail mix for snacks at school this week. These were $1.99 each from Aldi. Um, I was going to make corn soup this weekend, but they had absolutely no frozen corn. So we're just going to do a butternut squash, uh, cheesy broccoli soup. The recipe is in the Ultimate Kitchen Guide. We're also having black bean soup this week. They had no poblano pepper, so I'm using bell peppers instead in that recipe. The recipe is on my website. And then they had a great deal on avocados, but it was limit four. So we went ahead and got a bag because my girls asked for avocados in their lunches this week. Picked up some garlic powder for a dollar and some fresh garlic. Oh, and then one last thing, my daughter is was needing some new slippers and these were at Aldi for $8.99. So I went ahead and picked her up a pair of those. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make the olive sandwich because my girls are requesting that for their lunches tomorrow. So I'll make that in the morning. And then tomorrow I'm also going to show you um, how I cut the ginger and freeze ginger and show you how I make my lemon ginger hot tea because that's been a hot topic question in my direct messages over on Instagram. So hang tight and I will show you how to make those quick and easy recipes. Good morning, friends. Well, I am using a mini food processor and I have added one cup of walnuts to it with a couple tablespoons of water, a half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of a soy sauce or tamari, and you want to blend that until you get like a peanut butter consistency. Because walnuts have so much oil already in them, it's really quick. Sometimes I do have to add another tablespoon of water just to get it nicely pureed and creamy. And then you're going to add a whole can of drained olives. I like to smush the olives up in my hand and then just add them right to the food processor. You're probably thinking this is a very fatty spread, and you're right, walnuts and olives are, have a lot of fat in them. This is something that I like to enjoy occasionally, but I don't mind giving it to my kids because these are good fats that you want your kids to have. Especially when our kids are in school, we want them to have foods that are really good for their brains, especially when they are using them to learn. 
So I just put some of the spread right on their sandwich bread and that's it. You don't add anything else to the sandwich. I mean, you could add lettuce if you wanted to, but this is just how my kids like it with some homemade hummus and sliced bell peppers. Now we're going to move on to do some other prep work. I'm prepping some chickpeas right now to cook in the Instant Pot. I like to do this about every other week. And then we're going to move on and make my oats for the week. I take these little 16 ounce jars and I add a half of a cup of steel cut oats to each jar. And then I'm also making some this morning in a little saucepan. And then we're going to add seeds. This is a super seedy oatmeal. I really enjoy it. I add a tablespoon of chia seeds, a tablespoon of hemp seeds, and a tablespoon of flaxseed meal to each jar. And then we're going to add some seasonings like cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger to the jars as well. I love doing this little bit of prep work at the beginning of each week because it makes breakfast time for me on busy mornings so much faster. And then a couple of chopped dates. If you don't have dates, you could do raisins or craisins, but the dates are a great option because they're so good for your stomach. And I buy my dates at Costco and for about $8 a jar. Each morning I cook the oats in about two to three cups of water and apple juice. That's total, two to three cups total. And then I just add some more seeds and blueberries. Now we're going to move on to the ginger. Okay friends, when I buy this bag of ginger at Costco for about $5, I bring it home and I start chopping it up. And then I put it directly in my stasher bag there, that purple bag, and I freeze it for ginger tea. Now, any sort of scraps that I have left over from chopping the ginger, I use those to make my really healthy plant-based broth. It's like a bone broth, but it's actually plant-based. There's no bones in it. And I use those pieces of ginger right there in that broth. So I definitely save everything and use everything up. By doing this prep work, I make sure that I use up the ginger because sometimes, friends, there have been times where I just let that ginger bag sit in the fridge and then it goes bad and I've wasted my money. So doing this prep work is so necessary. Now you might be wondering about the ginger skin. Don't worry about it. There is nothing wrong with putting ginger skin in your tea. There is no harmful ingredients in the skin at all. So don't worry about it and it's a big time saver to leave it on. So I'm going to make you some ginger tea right now so you can see how to make it. So I add about three pieces of the frozen ginger with one slice of frozen lemon. I have a video all about how I chop and freeze my lemon slices. So check out that freezer tip video. And then I add a little bit of honey to the cup some water, this is my favorite small appliance by the way, a tea kettle, I love it. And then I let it steep for about five minutes. Now, don't worry about those little bits and pieces of the skin, I just typically just pull them right out and it's fine and the tea is delicious. The chickpeas are done cooking in the Instant Pot. So I am going to pull those out because I need to use my Instant Pot again. I'll show you that in a minute. But first, I just like to take that foamy little bit out with a slotted spoon. It's really easy to do. And then I'm going to just put my chickpeas in a mixing bowl to let them cool off because I'm going to then transfer them to some canning jars. But I'm not going to can them. I'm going to actually freeze them and use some of them fresh for lunches and things like that. So after I've done that, I'm going to use my Instant Pot again to make my plant-based broth, like my bone broth, but no. I'm actually all out of scraps that I typically use to make my vegetable broth. So I have that little jar there that I'm using to add my scraps to. But typically in my broth, I add onion and celery, carrots, garlic, any other scraps or food bits that I have, like I like to freeze the kale stems and add the stems to my broth. But 
I love freezing celery. That's probably my favorite thing to do because it tends to be one of those produce items that goes bad in my fridge. So I just tend to chop all the celery up and freeze it and use it for making my broth. When I am making my vegetable broth, I don't worry about onion skins or garlic skins. That doesn't really matter to me. And then I'm also going to add kelp. It's seaweed basically, but it's full of vitamins and minerals that you need. And that's typically what you extract when you do bone broth, but being plant-based, I don't do the bone. So I add the kelp and that is what gives me the vitamins and minerals. And then I'm also adding some mushrooms. I love adding mushrooms to my vegetable broth and I purchase those through Azure Standard. And if I don't have any uh, mushrooms, then I like to use mushroom powder. And then I just add some nutritional yeast and turmeric and fill the whole pot up with water. Here's the mushroom powder that I used. And this broth is absolutely beautiful and it tastes amazing. I absolutely love this broth. The original recipe was in fiber fueled. That's where I got the idea. And I'm so happy that I found it because I make this now about every week and I add it to soups and whatever I need broth for. So I'm just going to cook it for 45 minutes in the Instant Pot. Lastly, friends, here are my chickpeas. I'm just going to put in jars real quick and get them in the fridge. I want them to be in the fridge overnight so that they can completely cool off before I freeze them. I did set some chickpeas aside because we're having them for dinner tonight. And then I'm just going to add the chickpeas to my jars. Now, right now there's no liquid in them, but we will be adding liquid to the chickpeas before we put them in the fridge. Friends, I hope that this video helped you today to see how I grocery shop and then how I do a little bit of meal prepping for the week. Now, as you can see, I am prepping not really meals, but ingredients because I wanna make sure that we are using up the foods that we are buying. Also, I'm trying to be really good about not buying vegetable broth when I can easily make it at home. And using your Instant Pot twice in a row has really helped me. And so I hope that that tip helps you as well. So here's my food ready to go in the freezer and I hope that you have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you in the next video.